to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it. We have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to a well-designed business. If I had a nickel for every time one of you guys said to me, could you interview somebody that runs the back end of a design firm, like that operations person, office manager, whatever title you want to give that person, right? And then if I had another nickel for every time I said, that's a great idea, I wish I could find one, (laughs) we could all just stop all this stuff and just go off into the sunset. But I found one. I did find one. So I want to ask you, how's your business going? What's working? What could be fixed? Do you even know, right? Understanding our operations and uncovering the gaps within those operations is crucial to running a business well. And today, Hilaire Pickett Martin is with me. Hilaire grew up in the design world. Her mom is Judy Pickett, and Judy started Design Lines Interior Design Firm in 1979. Hilaire isn't a designer. But she is what every single one of you dreams of when it comes to business operations. She knows the industry inside and out, and she is a master at finding operational gaps and then discovering modern solutions to fill them. Lair joined her mom at Design Lines in 2008, focusing on communications. And then for the last 10 years, she has overseen all of the firm's business, accounting, and day-to-day operations. And she is with us today to discuss her processes, what works for her, and some of her favorite tools and strategies. You probably are going to want to listen more than once, and you're probably going to want to take some notes. (laughs) Now, before we get to the show, um, did you know that registration is open for Luann Live 2023. Yes, it is. Head on over to LuannLive.com. This year's conference is called Health and Wealth, a well-designed business within a well-designed life. That's right. We're going to address all the sides of us as human people, as business people and as human people. You're not going to want to miss this. All right. So far, I have lined up Brad Levitt from AFT Construction, Cheryl Luckett, Eileen Hahn, Amber De La Garza, Heather Hansen, Rachel Bozick, and Christy Rocha, all slated to speak, to teach us, and to help us grow our businesses. I will be adding more speakers over the next couple of weeks. We're going to be in Orlando, November 5th to 8th, 2023. And I have to say, I was recording this episode the day after registration opened. And I would not have thought that just not even a week later, I would have to say to you that seats are limited and don't delay. But on the first day that registration was open, we sold more than 60 tickets. There are only 330 seats available. So I urge you, do not hesitate, not to mention that the price goes up in increments as we go further into ticket sales. All right. I cannot wait to see you there. (laughs) I'm like super excited about it. Okay. Let's meet Hilaire. Hey, Hilaire. Thanks so much for joining me on the podcast today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. So here's the thing. I... You, you know, you know, everybody knows me by now. I have this big intake form and you have to answer all the questions. And then we look at it and we say, yay or nay, try again, go away, whatever we do. Yes, come on. Right. <laughs> um, but one of the questions I ask everyone is if you could name your episode, what would it be? And you put in there, want to take a day off on Tuesday? And I was like, yes, ma'am, I do. <laughs> like, <laughs> So, <laughs> this was a direct front of the line. Get this lady on the podcast. <laughs> so, 
I'm excited yeah. for this conversation because Hilaire, your mother has an interior design firm that she's had since the 90s, um, Design Lines Signature in the Raleigh area. And you have a very same trajectory as my kids as growing up in your mother's business. But for the last 14 years, you have run the back end operations. You are that unicorn that we all look for every single day. And we're like, are you my operations manager? Are you my operations <laughs> manager? Would you please yeah. be my operations manager? And so, so I'm super excited to have an operations manager on the phone. And I'm putting a title in. I don't know what you and your mom call yourself, but I read what you do and I just put a title on it. But you're the one who organizes the back end, right? I sure am. Absolutely. She does all the front design work and I help her handle the rest. <laughs> I love it. I love so. it. And everybody is like just so jealous right now of your mother. So talk to me about, um, let's just get into it. So you're not an interior designer yourself, of course, growing up in the business, Correct. I'm sure you're familiar with it. You have an eye and all the things, but you've never been a practicing designer in your mother's firm. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So you come to the company, w get me started. Why do you come to the company? Do you, you come from other jobs and you're just finally like, Hey mom, let's work. Like, how does it start? It starts pretty much right after graduation. I had a girlfriend of mine, um, from college. Um, I, you know, I thought I went to Elon university and majored in communications and I had a minor in dance and I said, you know, I'm not going to go do the big city PR thing. I'm just not, that's not what I wanted to do. And I had a girl, like I said, a girlfriend visit and she said, look what you have here. This is so cool. And you know, growing up, it, you could have heard me say, oh, mom, I don't want to work late nights and I don't want to do a ruler and I don't want to, <laughs> you know, do all these things that I see, you know, as I was a little girl growing up in the in the business. And she's like, that's fine. You do whatever you want to do, honey. <laughs> well, I said, mom, look, you know, my degrees in communications, let's just see what could happen. And she said, yeah, we have really nothing to lose. And so we started in my lane and what I'm good at is communications. And then over the years, it went um, into a bigger responsibility of helping her project manage and then overseeing accounting and um, the finances. And then um, it really has been something I love. I mean, it has been something that um, has just developed over the years. I mean, you know, she started, my mother started the firm in 79, 1979, mm. um, with the $500 in her pocket and, wow. um, you know, seeing her leadership over the years and seeing how she, you know, yes, designs, but runs the business side, um, of the business. She's definitely been a leader for me and a, and a mentor. Um, but then, you know, just, coming into this role, I just really, we have a good, honest relationship. And so I think being honest is the forefront and just saying, Hey mom, I see, you know, let's do X, Y, and Z or, Hey, like, why don't we go and hire, you know, this, this, and this, or, you know, whatever it may be. So we just always have these honest conversations. And so that's a mutual respect that we have for one another. And, and there are times we disagree, mm. um, you know, and I just say, you know, I, I respect your decision. I may not agree with it, but okay. <laughs> you know, so when, you know, we have that understanding, which I know isn't always the case with every mom, daughter, or any, any family member um, in any kind of business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so first of all, I just yeah, want to clarify, that, I think I said dates wrong. So I think I said 97. So your mom started in 79 and you came on in 2008. So she's kind of like our yes. same trajectory at Window Works. We started Window Works in 81. So we're, you, her yes. and I are probably um, very much in the same, you know, trajectory in our career. So, okay. So here's the thing. You come in. Yeah. She, you know, she's open to it, which is awesome. She probably, um, I, I imagine she probably had a certain level of expectation of what you'd be good at. And then it, I'll bet reading all of the things that you handle, she probably just was like, oh, and I had no idea all of this was coming. So that's super exciting. But 
you are, you said a sentence in here that I really loved and it was, let me find it. You said, I have this ability. I'm good at uncovering operational gaps and implementing technology frameworks to support workflow. So yes, talk to us about that because we've got people working in design firms that are listening and are thinking, this is my job. I should be doing that. And we have designers listening who own firms and are thinking, I need somebody who knows how to do this, but I barely can figure out how it would get done, let alone explain how I should hire for it. So what is what happens in your brain? What is it that you do that you uncover operational gaps and then you build the fam- frameworks to, to, count, to support them? Sure. Um, so I think everybody has a way of approaching anything. Everybody's got their way of doing things. And so for me, the way I compartmentalize is just like designers, I draw it out. Like I organizational chart, if you will, but it's not necessarily of like HR organizational chart of how do I get from point A to point B and how do I, what's the internal process or even what's the external process? When do we communicate with clients? When do we share, um, you know, okay, they give us money for a deposit and then we do purchase order, you know? So again, I'm drawing out every step of the process and it's just a circular box of this start of the process. And then when maybe things don't go as planned or when things, um, for example, for us, we have, we work with um, several delivery crews and we said, okay, we are spending an enormous amount of time emailing back and forth and emailing our subs. And then, um, over the years, Judy has ebb and flowed, um, you know, with employees anywhere from, you know, four to 10 at one point in time. And um, so there really became a time where there was so much outgoing as far as delivery crews. Mm -hmm. So um, we came up with Asana and Asana we use for communicating with our deliveries, delivery guys. We have a running list of everything that needs drapery everything that needs maybe or blinds, you know, for that sub. So in a way it helps me and Asana is also mobile. um, So I can pull it up anywhere on the go or anytime at a delivery, but it'll give me everything that I have listed for the project, everything I have listed for the delivery. Um, And so that's in a way my infrastructure and my delivery guy gets an email of what's going to be going for that project. So when he, he's at a manufacturer picking up, he knows, oh, I've got to pick up this, this, and this for this particular client or that client. Um, so going back to the, you know, finishing that original thought though, is again, mapping it out, just kind of looking at where in the process things are going really well, or where is a pain point happening? And when that pain point is happening, really sitting down and making a true, honest assessment of that audit of that pain point and saying, okay, why is it a pain point? Is it the communication breakdown? Are channels are channels clear or not? Or is there frustration or why is there frustration? Is it something that I can alleviate? So really, I just, I have those honest conversations and that mapping helps me visualize that in the process. So what I love is, you know, over the years, Hilaire, I have found with conversations like this where I know you have superpowers that I don't have. I know that. I know reading who you are and what you (laughs) do. I'm like, yeah, I don't have that brain, right? But when I ask questions of somebody like yourself that I really am like, hmm, I don't know how they do that. I The answer is, it's one of those things that it strikes me always as, oh, simple, but not easy, right? It's like the answer is simple. It's like, hello, if something isn't working, break it down and figure out, like you just said, what are the parts about this process that are working, but what are the parts that are not working or are just painful, right? Because we all have these systems in our business where, okay, we we muddle through, but if a ball's going to drop, it's typically in this area. And I have to say, you know, Window works is highly systemized. My own business is highly systemized. I am not the person who documents or creates most of the systems. I can tell you that. However, 
for my colleagues listening that also are more visionary versus operational, um, this is the crux of it here. And it's it's exciting, I think, if you have somebody in your business that your brain ticks this way. But I do know that we have on the regular solved problems like this without me having this skill set that I've just like, okay, this is the fifth time. Like I can just hear myself I, I, at window works. I'm there almost every day now while Kimberly is out with her baby Noah. And I'm literally like, okay, no, 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 no. That's the third time this, you know, in the last two weeks that this happened, how are we rechanging this? So it's funny because I think what I'm saying running on end here saying is we sometimes do the things that operational people do but we also feel like it's so elusive that we don't realize we can do it. We just have to slow down and focus on it. That's what I'm hearing. Is that kind of what you're saying too? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think there's simplicity in operations. I think sometimes, and I catch myself because I, I am passionate about um, how intricate things work. Um, But sometimes just keeping it very simple is, is key. I think if you get too into operations, it can kind of get too complex. So I've even had times where I said, oh, wow, this might be a little too much com- mm. complexity that we need. Let's take a step back. Mm. You know, is really this technology of Asana, you know, for us, it works great. For the next design firm, it may not work mm-hmm. fabulously, you know? So really first and foremost, before you implement a technology and even we um, here at design lines will say, is this needed? Is this warranted? Is it Mm. going to help us? Is it going to alleviate something? I mean, we used to have clients hand sign letter of agreements while we were like, okay, sometimes they get lost in the file. Some, you know, this was right, you know, uh, right where a lot of things were going electronic and we said, let's get DocuSign in. Let's get mm-hmm. DocuSign in. Let's get it so designers can sign it, you know, that the client can see it. They have a record of it, you know. And so there's just little things that we have found along the way that will serve a good purpose that are user friendly. That's huge for me, by the way, too. User experience. If a new technology is not user intuitive or friendly, it ain't going to win in my book. <laughs> I mean, right. it just isn't because like, right. cause people will I've got to be able it, right? to navigate it. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. So, okay. yeah, absolutely. So, so Simplicity. Yeah. And so when I was saying, you know, simple, but not easy, it's like, it's like, oh, of course, simple, just figure it out, break it down, but not necessarily easy. If your brain doesn't click that way and you just feel like it's an onerous thing, but you can hunker down and do it. And of course the best thing to do is break it off in chunks, but okay. So, so Asana, so we're not, what I love is what I think I'm starting to hear is you're not necessarily a firm who says, Asana for everything. It's like, oh, no, for your firm, maybe it works for more than one category. But what I'm hearing is Asana works for you with all of your, is it all of your trades and all of your subs, your window treatment people, your tile people, your painters, your wallpapers, your delivery companies? Is is that all, all of those people are Asana? And I guess you've you've got the Um, random paint guy who won't do, you know, a computer program. But for the most part, you know what I'm saying? Right. I honestly, I would say we use it for two subs um, that we use a lot of our work. So the drapery and we also actually, yeah, three, I'm sorry, three, um, our delivery guys, our drapery, and then we also use it for our reupholster. Okay. Okay. Um, And so that's how we submit quotes. And so through the platform, it is a project-based project management platform. And it is free. There are versions of it where you can pay, which are um, great tools within the paid section. But its free version is very intuitive. And um, we have found, no, we don't want to use it on the client side of our business. That's mm-hmm. too, that's like going back to the complexity. That's too com- complex. And what we like about our process of, of being personable and, and so forth. And so anyways, we, we go back to using Asana internally. And so it, it, what it does for us is it 
keeps all the information in one place. It decreases our email amount of email. And then two, I know exactly, (laughs) right. I know exactly where things are, you know, what are, what, what's going on as far as my reupholster, how many projects he's got in the queue of ours. Um, So it is extremely, extremely helpful for us. Um, So, okay. So I I say it's a win there. Okay. So I love this. So as a window treatment professional, okay. So what you're saying to me is if I'm working with you and I'm your window treatment company or you're a designer Uh and you've working with your window treatment company, when you request a quote from me, when you tell me that you changed the trim, it, there's a project in Asana for each of your clients that I have with you in my business right now. So at window works right now, I probably have at least 60 live design projects happening. And I literally was just talking to a designer yesterday going, I am so close to turning email off at window works. Like I am so close to doing it because it is such a mess. It is literally, I will have a designer, one designer a week and a half ago, literally in the space of 15 minutes, sent six different emails on the same client. Oh, and one more thing, this, and one more thing that, and oh, and by the way, in the room XYZ, we changed this and I'm watching these emails come through and my brain is on fire. I am just like, I'm supposed to find all this information three months from now when you actually do the order. Like it's, insane. And so, and I get that the designer wants to document the information that she's giving us. Okay. This is an assistant doing this, but at the same time, it's not organized. It's not collated in the same, you know, 15 minutes that her six emails came in, we probably got 45 other emails, you know, and now all of a sudden that one line that the trim was changed in one bedroom is truncated in an email thread and it might get lost on our end. Like it's crazy. So this, what you're telling me is, right? It keeps it all right there. So client Smith, you can do update or whatever. And I'm not searching through 300 emails that came into my business today to find the three that have to do with your project. Absolutely. I mean, you know, from hypothetical (laughs) perspective, you could have, you could have each project be the design firm that you work with. And then there's a it's all task related. So each task could be, you know, you know, designer A, B, and C has, you know, drapery, two, two pairs of drapery or whatnot. And then you can attach PDFs. So you could attach the purchase order, the work order, any communication. You can invite somebody from outside to follow the thread or to follow, you know, you could invite that design firm um, to that particular project. And so what it allows for is there's continuity in communication. For my and it's all in one guy, spot. I po- when I want to sit down and do a yes, work ma'am. order three months from now, I just pull that Asana project up and I'm like, okay, how many times did we change our mind on trim? Let me go look. <laughs> right? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Well, my delivery, so for with my delivery guy, I post bill of lading receipts or, hey, here's the tracking information screenshot or yes. what have you. Um, so it's very intuitive. He has all that information for that job right there. I love it. Um, okay. That's so, the price of admission yeah. right there. Poor window works. Cause I'm going <laughs> to pull the yank, pull the, pull the string and we're going to yes. do. Okay. I love it. I love it. Okay. Yeah. So this is sort of the type of thing that I have designers say to me all the time, get an operations person on mm. and pick it apart. So Asana you use for communications with your delivery company, your drapery firm and your upholstery firm. And then Um, what is like some of the other things I see you have written here, Canva, I'm assuming that's for creating social graphics. Is it beyond that? Correct. No, not necessarily. I mean, I think the only other thing, um, you know, we've played around using Canva for is design inspiration or kind of mood boards um, with color and inspiration pictures. But the other one, Millinote and Airtable, um, these are so cool. And when I was like, going to prep to talk to you, I was like, we have to talk about these. So Airtable is free. It's another platform, but we utilize it as a company forecast, Hmm. not from a dollar standpoint, although you could, 
we look at it as what projects are in what phases, oh. meaning like design for us, we, we at any given time could have renovations going on. We could have new construction. We could have furniture. We could have people who are, um, you know, maybe on hold um, for a time being. And so I categorize our projects based on those defined areas that I just spoke of just mentioned. So like, it will allow me to, to say, you know, this, this client is in this phase and any notes about the project, or if it needs to be assigned to a team member, whatnot, if it needs to go to that level. Um, but it's just a simple graphing chart that I can play around with and utilize. And that's how Judy and I really say, okay, what do we have on the, on the whiteboard? You know, what do we have on the drawing board? Where, where do we need to where do we need to um, produce letter of agreements? Where do we need to get ready for furniture installs? Which clients? Um, so I utilize that Millinote for for or not Millinote. I'm sorry, Airtable for that purpose alone. It could be I've seen um, Airtable utilized for intakes of our actually our workroom uses Airtable. Um, you know, for, for their workflow, but then to also communicate to us out of another platform, how, you know, how, where all of our projects are in the workroom or even another, we use two workrooms. The other workroom use it as a way to, um, intake, um, work order information. So it's just ways to quantify and categorize information, whatever you may need it for. So if a designer needs it for company forecasting, if a designer needs it for, I don't know, a particular project that's plumbing and lighting and, you know, all kinds of things. I mean, I think you can manipulate the data any way you want to. Mm -hmm. So it's a structure. Mm -hmm. It's funny because in a coaching session yesterday, um, someone just said to me, you know, I need to figure out how I'm going to timeline my projects, right? How am I going to know what what projects are in what phases, to your exact point? And it was funny because I said to her, I said, well, I know back in the day, I don't know, you know, with Sandra Funk and her interior design standard, if she's changed or she still uses a whiteboard, because I know her business is very much run on Asana. Um, But I can remember 10 years ago going into Sandra's office, you know, to pick up trim or to drop something off or just to say hi, and there would be the whiteboard. And there were all the clients down one side on the left side, and then across the top were all the different categories of the phases. And, you know, they would have these little marker thingies, sticky things like this is where this client is. And Tori Alexander also was on the show years ago, and she talked about her timeline being on a whiteboard, too. But these are, you know, these are 10 and six year old conversations. So what happens now is you're utilizing this in Airtable. And of course, we have so many more people that are, we are allowing our, our staff to work remotely. Maybe you're at home with your four kids, your mom is, you know, at the office, but she can go in and you can update and she can see what's happening, right? As opposed to, you got to be in front of the whiteboard to see it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, and I think um, it's just allowed for, Eat, like you said, work from home, or if I got to do kids that um, deal with kids, you know, s- sick during the day and be with them, but maybe I need to work on some stuff at night. And so it allows for flexibility. It allows, yeah. like you said, yes, to be virtual. I love Absolutely. it. I love it. And what I'm, what I'm hearing and what I love is, is that like my, my aha as I'm listening to you is so often we will, you know, get on Asana or get on Airtable and be like, hmm, but it doesn't really work for this part of my business. And then we toss it aside. I have done that myself. I have had conversations with people. They're like, yeah, I know. I know you love Monday Lou. Monday.com is what we use at Lou and I Gara Inc. But I don't like the one feature there. And what I'm hearing, which is just so like, hello, why didn't I think about that? No one platform has to work for everything that we do. It's like having only one filing cabinet in our business back in the day. We used to have the file of the open orders. Then we have the file of the closed orders. Then we have the file of the bills. Then we have the file of the invoices. Like It's like, hello, if Airtable works for these functions, but you know, 
Asana works for these functions, then don't require one thing to work for all the things. I love this idea. You would think that I just dropped off like, you know, Mars and I never knew of technology the way I'm like, oh my goodness about this. Aha. It's a little crazy, Hilaire. It's a little crazy. So, no. Right? Well, like it's like, yeah. it's nuts, right? It, well, it is, but I think it goes back to like a goal setting for yourself. I think, and, and, to, and an expectation hmm. for me, I set an expectation of when, for example, when, when you know, I've looked at air, uh, mil, or air table, excuse me, is saying, okay, I just want to see what this is about. That's my expectation. Hmm. If you come in right, you know, you know, going in, going, I'm going to use this for every part of my business and I'm going to do this. Well, then you set yourself up for this high standard of like, maybe unobtainable, maybe, maybe not, not sure. But the thing is, is like, set up something that's realistic of, okay, I just want to learn about this. Well, maybe let me play around with it. Let me say, okay, well, let me input this data. How can, you know, so that's where I sort of, as I discover a new technology, I'm like, what can this do for me? And I just say, okay. Let me just see, again, going back to the user experience, let me see how this benefits me and can it serve one purpose? And if it can serve one purpose, does that one purpose help alleviate something? Going back to the original, why, you know, why would I, what um, would I name the, what would I title my own episode? Can it make it so that I can get my day off on a Tuesday? Mm -hmm. You know, can I do it so that I don't have 400 emails to respond to, but I might maybe only have 75 because everything is all in Asana or is in Airtable. And I can, you know, figure out where all my projects are at a glance notice. Mm -hmm. um, and so the other thing that's really key that I want to touch on too, Luann, is I compartmentalize also my day to day, meaning mm -hmm. I don't write a check every day. Right. We are the same I, way. Yep. You, you talk about, yeah, like you talk about files, like you should see them. I have them color coded here on my desk, but I might get an invoice in my email, you know, every day, but on Thursdays are typically when I write checks. So mm -hmm. I'll, I will kind of hold them and accrue them there, or I might do invoicing on out to clients on Fridays. Um, mm -hmm. So I know that I've got like on my to-do list, it's almost like broken down by like client-based accounting based, communications based, or project management based, or, you know, facilities like, you know, taking the trash out or something, something like that. But <laughs> the, the, the point, the point is, is like, I, if all I did was be reactionary to my email or anything that was coming up, I would never be able to take a day off on a Tuesday. Right. So it's like, right. You know, so like having that mindset, I don't have to respond to something so quickly. Or if I do, I respond, Hey, I received your email. I'm working on it. I'll get to you an answer by, you know, Friday or whatnot. Right. So like knowing that I'm due expediting, you know, every other Monday and that's the bulk of what I do, or I do my checks on Thursdays or I do my, the only thing that really isn't scheduled to be honest is my social media because who Lordy. <laughs> Social media, I tell you what, it, I, I, lo I love it, but I also, you know, at the end of the day, I'm going to be doing business things, um, you know, instead. But right. um, I do love social media. But to that point is, is I also break out my day to day because um, that's the only way I can handle it. When I get checking, checking the mail or getting invoices through email, again, I put them in the file. And that's so helpful for me because once it's in the file, I know that I'm going to address it on that Thursday. Right. You know, we've always done that. You know, Vin, Vinny at Window Works has always trained us to do that, to batch the days and forever and yes. ever. Thursdays was the day that either he back in the day had to review all invoices for accuracy and Friday was the day that the checks were written or, and now it's the, the um, bookkeeper, you know, the data entry person reviews them and then he, he pays them. But it's the same thing. You can't just, oh, another bill came in. Let me just sit down and write that because to, to here's the thing thing. Just as a little sidestep here, here's why yeah. we don't just pay a bill the day it comes in, because we never pay a bill without researching that it's correct. So two things right. happened to us in the last two weeks. Just Monday, 
he came over to me and he showed me three charges on our UPS account that he didn't recognize the location that it went to or the name of the person it went to. And so he went over to Catherine, our office coordinator. Nope. Went over to Joanna, our data entry clerk. Nope. Went over to JC, who owns the company now. Nope. Went to the three salespeople. Nope. He comes over to me. He's like, all right, you're my last shot. Like, do you know this? I'm like, nope. Well, there were almost $400 worth of UPS charges on our account that don't belong on our account. They were three invoices out of probably 60 in a month's worth of invoices. This man looks at every single line item. And you can't do that if you're just getting the bill and writing the check. Because but to your point, you're just spending all day reactionary back and forth and not actually doing quality work, right? And then Absolutely. the same thing happened Ab- with our drapery Absolutely. workroom. I've got all the bills and I'm sitting here reviewing all the bills and I found five inconsistencies. And I was like, this doesn't make any sense. And I called up to the accounting department at the workroom and it turned out that whether it's five Roman shades or one Roman shade, their quantity says one. And so it was interesting because I was like, well, how am I supposed to know if it's right then? Like I'm giving you 200 Roman shades this month. Am I supposed to like pull every single order out? And so now the owner of the workroom the accounting manager took that comment and that dilemma. And I said, I get it. I can't ask you to change your system, but I can't just pay because you say this is the total price. I said, I'm going to have to think about how we're going to work together on this. And before I even, it was, that was Friday on Monday, the owner of the workroom called and he says to me, tell me your problem. Let me see if I can do something on my end to help fix it. And so this is, this is, This is so critical because if you just are in the weeds, just boom, 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 doing this, client emails, calling, you know, doing expediting every which way, willy nilly all day, you know, it's chaos, right, Hilaire? It, it absolutely is. And I think it takes so much energy from away from other things. Like mm-hmm. I'm trying to put, I always try and put myself in as the designer or even um, as a mom, like you're being pulled in so many different directions. You've got a contractor calling you, you might have a client calling you, you might have, you know, all these things. And so, you know, it's almost like trying to do something when there's so many things going on and it's like, okay, if you, we just, okay, sit down and we visit job sites on Mondays and Wednesdays and we do business hours on Tuesdays and Thursdays or what have you, whatever system works for you, for you to be able to group your tasks helps the mental load of feeling Mm. one less burnout, two more present and three, you get that energy hundred percent, like you said, a hundred percent to focus on that and to not feel so stretched. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that people underestimate how many invoices come to them that are wrong, like legit. Right. Yeah. It just, I do. Well, and that's, well, and that's where for us, I, you know, as much as I use technology, I also use paper. I've yeah. got my purchase order paper form. I've got my acknowledgement. I print everything out still, mm-hmm. you know, and when I get that invoice before I put, you know, that I've bill paid it or credit card paid it, whatever it may be, there is still a paper trail and that's mm-hmm. still important, you know, for me. Now mm-hmm. there might be a lot of people who do everything electronically and that's wonderful, you know, but for me and you know, what we do, we love to have the paper trail. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I know Vita, um, who does the WTF episodes with me, she's completely paperless. It's amazing. Uh, I couldn't do it and we're That's striving awesome. to get there, but she also has a very special yeah. brain. <laughs> she really does. <laughs> <laughs> she really does. So, so tell me about Milanote. What is this uh, technology? So, Milanote um, was utilized and first introduced to me um, when I was working with a photographer. Mm. And Milanote can also, I can see very uh, same application for a designer, but it's a way, it is basically a white electronic whiteboard, 
but it is a place where collaborators can come together, share ideas, um, share anything about a project. Really, you can make it anything you want. For the photographer that I utilized this with, we had everything we needed for our photo shoot day. What the styling is, the floor linked to the floor plan, um, you know, even what we were doing, the shoot. It's almost like a pre-production. Mm. What I utilize it for is a pre-production mapping. You can utilize it for a pre-production or a pre design meeting with your client. You can have your inspiration. You can have going in and, you know, even having your selections that you've made for the living room and visual composition of the images um, or have the floor plan there. Um, You know, if you are working remotely with clients and they're in, you know, California and you're in New York, um, you know, and so it, it gives you everything at your fingertips right there and you're not having to go to different files or um, going to, um, you know, spending all that time trying to find things or screen share or whatnot, they have the same thing that you're looking at. Um, it's just, su- it's super, super cool. And it just seems like, I guess what I'm inferring from your conversation is maybe it's just more of a, a visual stylistic tool than say Airtable is like you could put a pre-production mapping in Airtable or Asana for your photographer, but it feels like maybe this is just a more graphic or descriptive or artistic way. And that makes more sense for client presentations and, or for meetings and, and, and shoots with the photographer. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I mean, I love it. I mean, I, it's like what you're literally saying is it's, it's, it's like a restaurant. It's like, we know how to make, you know, pasta and lasagna and minestrone soup. So we don't just make one. We, we make them all and we don't, we don't expect ourselves or make ourselves serve the same thing. So you utilize each technology for the thing that it's really good at. And we don't care that there are other technologies and maybe that one, could do the thing that another's doing, but it doesn't do it as well. And so therefore you just, you know, slice it off and dice it to where it makes sense. I love that. That's like, yes, you think it was not such a, a, like an out of the box idea, but it kind of is. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, I'm caught, like I said, you know, there is a platform or an app or any sort of company for any type of operational thing. Um, but really, I challenge everybody to, to say what is important to them. You know, what do you want to automate or what do you want to elevate for your client experience? Um, you know, and just really, really focus on that and, and just start small. There's no wrong way to do anything. It's just what you are willing to do, commit to, and just be bold for it. You know, just go after it. I mean, for, you know, for Judy and I, going back to the letter of agreements, that was something that was really big for us. And we said, okay, let's do this. What's the investment? Okay, what does that require of me? What does that require of Judy? You know, and so we said, okay, well, let's do it. And, you know, it's been successful. So, um I like that. And you use the DocuSign for letter of agreement. And even something as simple as that, I will tell you that um, we use that in my business here. And I told Vincenz about it and JC about it for window works. And it's, there's a, there's, it's not hard. It's not hard to understand. You send a document, somebody signs it, they send it back. It's, it's not that it's hard to do, but it is hard to change the stripes. It is hard to create a new process. And that's the thing. And so what we just recently had a situation where something, I mean, like, look, if we're going to sell you five or six or $7,000 worth of window treatments, you know, you're, you know, saying by email, it's ready to go. And you give me the money because when you give me your money, you're basically saying I'm going right. But we do do commercial right. projects, a hundred, two hundred thousand dollar commercial projects, and that's what we got the DocuSign for. Because then you're like the guy that said yes might not be the guy that's there by the time this commercial project comes to fruition six, eight months, ten months later. And so that was where we mm-hmm. were like, oh, Bob said okay to this. Well, Bob's not here anymore. Oh, awesome. But even that simple thing when you just said there. Judy and I sat down, we looked at it, we looked at each other and we said, are we going to do this? It takes that 
moment of decision and then the the following through moments of, oh, wait a minute, did we send them a DocuSign? Oh, wait a minute, did we do it? Did we capture it? Did we download it? Did we do the things? Because that is the thing. We can all start something, but it's the following it through. And, and I guess to Hilaire, I would say, you know, would you say, I mean, there are times that you've started something, you've said it, and then you're just like, you know what, a week or two weeks or a month later, like this isn't actually working for us. And then you kind of go back to the drawing board again. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, it's not necessarily, I mean, sure, you could say it's a failure, but it's an opportunity to find, again, what is the gap? Why did it not work? And make it better. Or say, okay, having, and there's nothing wrong, I think, with with saying, okay, it didn't work, but right. let's find another way to make it work. Or right. what, what is that, um, look like for you? And even if there's not something that you find the next day, you know, create it for yourself or create that next step to get you eventually to where you need to go. Um, you know, for, for us, I think one was the automation of the social media, you know, um, you know, using, like later gram, I think that's what it's called. Um, you know, that was, you know, I, I, so easy. Yes. User-friendly, but it's like, oh my gosh, like I would sit there for hours and be like, okay, what am I going to do for these captions? I got beautiful images, but like the (laughs) captions matter and the tags and like the hashtags and who you tag and all this sort of stuff. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is taking way more time than it needs to. Mm. And then maybe I put it in there, but didn't finalize it. Or, you know, it's just as a schedule and not an actual post. And I'm like, ah, you should see my hair getting like frazzled. (laughs) Uh, You know, and it's just like, okay, this isn't working. Like, let's just, let's get back to, let's get back to (laughs) the, the um, first step. Okay. I want to post. Well, maybe I can't always schedule, but maybe I can write it down on a piece of paper. Like this week I want to do a post about, you know, an install or do a story about something we're working on and just go back to the simplicity of what it is you want to do. So that's a prime example for something that really didn't ultimately hundred percent work for us. And I was just like, this ain't working. (laughs) So I love it. I love it. I love the clarity. But it might work for that next design firm. I mean, one right. design firm might absolutely love Latergram and that is perfectly okay. Right. A hundred percent. Right. I mean, that's the thing. That is the bottom line. We have to see and try and figure out yep. what works for us and what doesn't work. Um, before I let you go, I do want you to share yes. the, your... You, you guys do a pretty good job of supporting the high schools and encouraging uh, students who are interested yeah. in design. Just give us a few minutes on that. That's pretty fabulous what you guys are doing. Absolutely. Um, I One of the jobs that I do of many um, is helping our facilities and our showroom you know, rotate out the discontinueds. A lot of sales reps, you know, are, are fabulous and they will come and scan discontinued fabrics. Well, um, over the years, yes, college, co- we are blessed to have a lot of um, dis- interior design programs around in the area. But I recently found out, um, probably about a year, two years ago, that in our local school system, there are interior design programs and teachers need a lot of resources to help teach design, interior design. And so um, we donate on a regular basis um, our discontinued samples um, that are no longer, you know, needing to go back to the um, factories or manufacturers. Um, And so we donate them. And so high school students, in a way, yes, we're helping the landfills uh, by not putting those discontinueds in into there, but we're also helping the next generation to understand what the difference is between a velvet or a linen, mm. or hey, this is an example of a wood finish, or even old catalogs. Even mm. I just rotated out a few catalogs like 2001, or not 2001, excuse me, 2021 or 22 <laughs> um, lighting catalogs, you know, and those things are good. Yeah. They're thick. They still articulate different components of design. So why not let high school students understand or cut out a chandelier for their design project or their bo- vision board or mm. what have you? Um, and so that has been a wonderful experience of donating um, to the local school systems here. But then the other thing 
Um, I do, and it happens probably once a quarter, but I get requests to come in and just see what design is like. I mean, when I was in college and even in high school, I would be curious about different things. Um, I, like I said, I have a dance background. And so, um, you know, just being curious about what a design, like a dance store was like. So I spent Mm. some time as a high schooler, like understanding that, but they have high school students that come in and say, can we just job shadow? Can we just see what that's like? I had three internships in college and um, I know what it's like to like be asking for that or, you know, and so I know, come on in, just take an hour, you know, Mm. let me show you what the studio looks like. Let me give you some resources. You know, Um, Judy's a a wonderful proponent um, and, about ASID and your certifications and, um, you know, and CIDQs and all, all of this stuff. And so just telling the students like, Hey, if you are wanting to do this for a career, like, look at, look at all these possibilities, look at these universities, or even if you don't know what part of design you love, Mm -hmm. like start, start finding the blogs, the social medias, the, um, you know, big coffee table books and just, just be a sponge and soak things up. And so that's really where I find a lot of my passion too, is just mentoring and helping the people who are curious about design. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I just love seeing it. that. I think it's, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. Cause um, I just had um, some people come in to about two weeks ago um, and just, they were like, wow, this is just so cool, <laughs> you know? And just to hear that passion yes. um, is awesome. Yeah. No. And I think um, to your point, I think one of the most powerful aspects of it is to understand all the different jobs that do happen within an interior design firm. Right. So somebody could have a real passion for it, but maybe not really feel like they have the skill set to be the designer. And of course, at high school level, you probably haven't discovered that yet. Right. Um, However, but you know, here you are, you are making an, a tremendous impact on an interior design firm, on its profitability, on its success, on its day to day, both for the people that work with and for you and your mom, but also for the clients that you and your mom service. And you're not a designer. And so from anything from somebody who just loves the idea, loves the field and knows that, oh, there's a way I could fit a role here. You know what I'm saying? All the way up to being the designer, of course. So I love that because that's, that's the experience exposure that you get as a kid that, that turns you on a dime, you know, it really, um, isn't, I remember never thinking that I was creative. Like I went to school all through high school and where I went to school, if you were in the art track, if you were in art classes, it was because you could literally draw. You would never take an art class in the high school I went to if you could not draw because it would be like, what are you doing here? Right. So therefore, I equated create being creative with either drawing or playing a musical instrument, which I couldn't do either. And it wasn't until I just randomly started working for Vinnie and Window Works. And I was like, oh, my God, I know proportion and scale innately. It's like I can look at this particular shade of blue and it carries in my mind all the way back to the showroom where I want to find, you know, a, a, a sample or a drape or a shade or something to go with it. And I didn't even know that I could do that until I realized other people around me couldn't do those things. And so I was like, oh, I guess I'm creative. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. those experiences, young I never considered a creative field because I just was like, I don't do this. So then, and here's the thing. I'm not the other track either. I'm not your finance, your math, your analytical, your statistics person. So, you know, here I am kept trying to put a square peg into a round hole when I was trying to, you know, go to college because I'm in these business statistics, statistics type classes going, why can't I understand this? Like microeconomics, I'm sorry, no. And it's, yeah. I'm not going to be able yeah. to have that conversation. You know what I'm saying? So it's um, absolutely very good that you do that. Thank you. And I, you know, I challenge other designers um, across the country, you know, just just reach out and ask because you never know whether you may or may not have, you know, someone at that high school level, um, you know, even if it's 
you know, quilters leagues or just anything, you know, I think there's bigger conversation that I would assume is being had, um, you know, by, by, I see it by different publications and conversations, but like about our industry and the, the amount of waste or the amount of excess at the end, whether it's fabric, whether it's um, packing materials or what, what not. And so I guess as designer, you know, designer to fellow design firms, you know, challenge yourself of saying, Hey, when those sales reps come in, you know, have a place where you might be able to call and say, Hey, do you want discontinued fabric samples? You know, typically they're normally, you know, a two by two little square or what have you, and just see what happens. I mean, they're, I am blown away by the amount of people who will, will take stuff, even if it's a scrap exchange, even if it's mm. a quilters league or just anything, um, you know, to help alleviate the landfill, but yes. also to create those business to business connections. Cause I mm-hmm. think sometimes you never know where those lead. That's right. You know? You're exactly so, right. You're exactly yeah. right. Well, I have to tell you, I could probably pick your brain all day about this stuff, but I, I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I do too. I, yeah, it's really, it's fascinating, you know, that, that one little slice there that don't, you don't need to have everything work for everything, find the thing that it works for. And I love the actual core of the advice is figure out what the problem is you're trying to solve, you know, start there. And you also said, yes. um, figure out what is the process or system that's facing to your client that you want to make better and then pick that apart, drill Absolutely. down on that. Yeah, two really good good things. And also, you know, Asana for window treatment people <laughs> and designer relationships. <laughs> we will be exploring that one ASAP. <laughs> so. Well, absolutely. Hey, absolutely. If you ever need any, want to see it, I, I think there's videos online, but if you ever want to see anything, I'm more than happy to help. Yes. So. I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to give it a shot because I've used Asana before. I'm going to give a shot of how we would set it up. And if I can't figure it out, I might ask you for your click and paste of your template for it. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. My goodness. All righty, Hilaire. Thank you so much for joining me today. Tell your mother, I am so glad that she has you. I know how lucky she is and I'm sure she knows it too, but you know what, what a joy to have your daughter be this person in your business. It's got to be an incredible feeling for her. So thank you for being here. Absolutely. Thank you. And it's, a, um, I feel blessed to work alongside of her. Hilaire is your dream come true, isn't she? (laughs) And how great is it for her mom, Judy, you know, to have her daughter in her firm and to have this opposite superpower of her own. And, you know, I have to say, I love working with our kids at Window Works over the years. I think at some point or another, every one of them has worked there. And of course, now Christy and her husband, JC, are the majority owners of Window Works. Um, Christy also has her podcast, Sass Says, so that keeps her busy. But like Hilaire mentioned, it takes mutual respect and it does add this really cool, fantastic layer to your relationship, which I happen to enjoy and appreciate as well. Now, Judy and Hilaire sound like a true integrator visionary team. If you're not sure about this concept, I did a show with Deborah Scarpa on window treatments for profit, and it might be going, you know, worth going back to listening to episode 125. We'll link it here in the show notes. But basically, Visionaries and integrators are wired entirely different, different, right? Visionaries are the what and the why, and the integrators are the how. You see, you can't get the what and the why done without that how person, right? Hilaire is the how person through and through. How might sound simple, but that doesn't mean easy especially if your brain isn't wired that way. Hilaire helped me realize that we don't have to overcomplicate these things no matter how we're wired. Because many of us have strengths on both sides, we just have to break things down step by step, see what works in the operation and in the solution, okay? So let's first look at something Hilaire does that any of us can do right now, starting today. She compartmentalizes her tasks. We call these batch days, okay? Vinny has done this from day one at Windowworks. I'm talking since 
40 years, and he has taught each of us to do it too. Whether it's writing checks, sending invoices, visiting job sites, getting deliveries, every one of these tasks has a set day and time, and Hilaire doesn't deviate from that. This is an actionable step you can implement in your business now, saving you time and energy. And I will tell you, the other thing is I get it why the integrator type personality likes it because it's organized and all the things. But for a visionary personality, I'm going to tell you the plus is you're not mentally changing gears. You come in in the morning, if you're like me, you clean off your desk, you spend five minutes organizing everything because the day before you just stood up and walked away, right? I, did you ever notice that the integrators, like they leave their desk completely organized? No, I have to sit down, I get it all organized, but when I have a batch day and I know this is the thing I'm going to be working on that day, it's just much smoother. Okay. So I do think my point is, I think it works for both personalities, integrators and visionaries. Okay. So after you do that, look at your systems, every one of them, draw them out like Hilaire does and track them. You might notice the pain points. Okay, but you have to also collect the data and keep records or you will not see where the gaps and the trends are. Okay, you can't solve problems if you don't know what's causing them. So what we're talking about here is when you're looking at like you're doing the autopsy of a project and then you're highlighting things that went wrong, then you're taking a time a month or six every quarter, say, to look to see. What were the problems on each of the projects that you highlighted? Do, are you seeing trends? Are you seeing that there were 20 completed projects, you know, there was 30 problems, complete, you know, across the 20 projects, but 20 of the problems were in the same system, were in the same part of the project. You see, that's the kind of data you're looking for because that's what you have to go and attack. Like, you know, otherwise you're doing that Einstein theory of insanity, right? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So it's looking at it. And that's what Hilaire says that she does. She looks across everything and then looks for that gap and then looks to figure out how to change it. Okay. And as you heard, Hilaire loves to change and, you know, fix those gaps through technology. She loves new technology. Her brain thrives on the complexity of it. It's not for everyone, but Hilaire understands keeping things straightforward and un uncomplicated is an important part of fixing the pain points. So she says to seek out user intuitive and user friendly technology so that everyone on the team can work with it, right? And I have to say my favorite aha of this entire conversation, which I have already brought back to the Windowworks team. I have brought to our exciting Windows company. I have practically told everybody that I have spoken to since this interview. The favorite aha I have of this is that if a technology works for certain things, but not all the things, that's okay, right? When she mentioned her Asana, I expected that she was going to tell me that she uses it for communication and project management with all of her trades. And she said, no, it's really most effective with my window treatment company, my upholster and my receiver. And my brain was like, well, then that's only three people. You probably have 20 trades. I didn't say all that, but in my brain, I'm thinking, why would you use that one thing? You know, when there's, and the point is the more I listened instead of talking, just listen to her. I was like, Oh, and I really could start to visualize how helpful it would be specifically with your window treatment supplier. You know, obviously, I know that process intimately. And all of a sudden, I was like, oh, see, we've looked at Asana at Windowworks before. I use Monday.com in my own business. And we've said, ah, no, yeah, see, Market Sharp, our, our CRM is so much better for this and that and the other thing. But it doesn't provide us exactly what Asana is doing for Hilaire and her team with her window treatment professional, keeping all the communication in one spot. That's like my number one favorite thing about this conversation. And so therefore, I've walked around for the last couple of weeks since this interview going, why do we throw the baby out with the bathwater? There are a myriad of responsibilities and tasks and, you know, functions that we have to take care of in a, the course of a single day in a business. And what's with this expectation that a single technology would work across all those tasks? And, and I just like blew my mind, like legit blew my mind, right? And, and I have to say, it reminds me 
when I've had conversations with you and you're like, oh, I, I love my Doma for the this and this and this and this, but it doesn't do that. So I don't use it. And I usually just look at you and I'm like, well, that stinks because I think it's great. But now I'm like, oh, right. You see, if my Doma studio is a great place for you to do the things, whatever, you know, there's so many functions of my Doma studio, guaranteed one person will like these five functions, another person will not like those five functions and they'll like another function. But this aha moment of an organized process driven person that I've gotten is if it works, it works. You don't have to squ- fit a square peg into a round hole. If it works for one, two, three things, but it super increases the efficiency of those three things, then who cares what it doesn't work for? I mean, like, I'm just like mind blown, like literally mind blown. I've had a dozen conversations with designers like, oh, I like Airtable, but it doesn't do everything. I like Bootcamp, but it doesn't do everything. I like this, but it doesn't do anything. So use Asana for that, Bootcamp for that, Airtable for that, like, whoa, right? That's like saying, oh, the only way I could ever talk to somebody is if I use the landline telephone. No, sometimes you use a landline. Sometimes you use a text. Sometimes you use a voice text. Sometimes you use a Voxer. Sometimes you send an email. There are a thousand ways that you communicate with people. You don't say, oh, the landline won't work for everything, so I'll never use the landline again. (laughs) Right? Like this is the, uh oh my God, I'm going on and on because it just really blew my mind. Okay. Now. I love what Hilaire said about expectations. We have to be realistic and go into these things with an open mind. She just starts playing around with it. She finds out what it can do, what it can't do. And she sees where it can take her, right? So the other platforms that she uses are Airtable and Millinote, okay? Um, We'll put all of these links in the show notes. And I just want to say, I think a good analogy is to think about when you're designing a room. When you're putting it together, you don't put yourself in this box where Everything in the room, the soap, the coffee table, the lamps, the rug, everything, the accessories, the art has to come from one vendor. No, you will look across multiple vendors for even a single room, let alone an entire home, and you will pick and choose the best of each for that space. And this is that major aha moment for technology. (laughs) I love it. Now, it might take some trial and error to see what works best for you. And of course, if you have an, you know, organized integrator type personality in your team, it would be so much nicer to, you know, task them with it than trying uh, to have us do it as visionaries, right? But, you know, short of that, (laughs) you got to do the work, right? Um, And Hilaire also talked about how she automates her social media posts, right? You know, we see them all day long popping up on the feed. You're thinking, how are they getting any work done, right? Because it's like a full-time job. Well, she streamlines her posts with later.com. And that's an awesome idea. And I have to say, you know, we just had Darla Powell of Wingnote Social Social on the podcast recently, 861. If you missed that episode uh, and you are interested in upping your Instagram game, she came out with a very comprehensive, Instagram for interior designers. It's a downloadable course. You can do it at your own pace. You can task the, you know, the marketing person on your team with it. You can task the intern on your team with it. It's A to Z on how to develop, plan, and execute a full IG presence, right? That earns you potential client interactions and inquiries. All right. Highly, highly recommend you check that out. We'll put the link in the show notes. All right. In a nutshell, what is Hilaire telling us today? She's saying we don't have to work 12, 16 hours a day doing every single thing independently, right? We can streamline our processes and we can just write checks on Wednesdays. We can adopt systems and applications like Asana and Monday.com to make it easy to find our information so we're not wasting hours looking through emails. We can ask for help and we can hire it out if that's what we need to do. And the thing is when we do these things, Maybe, like Hilaire, we can take Tuesday off. (laughs) I love that idea, right? So what a fun and helpful conversation, Hilaire. I appreciate your insight and advice today and, you know, high five. And if you've got a killer project manager or office administrator, integrator, whatever you want to put the title to be, and you'd like to have them interviewed, I am always on the lookout for this like unicorn out there because anytime one of these brilliant organized people can come and give us some insights like this, it's good for all of us, okay? So 
Put something of today into action. Okay, put something, find something that you can do and change in your business today. And then tell me, once you've got that organized, what you're going to do with that extra day off. All right? Thanks tons for listening today. I do appreciate you, appreciate you so much. Decide to be excellent. Thank you for joining me today. This podcast is a production of Luann Nigara, Inc. If you want to know more about me, my books, or Luann University, go to luannnigara.com. And if you are interested in having Window Works help you with your next window treatment or awning project in the New York, New Jersey metro area, go to windowworksnj.com to learn more. Have an excellent day.